to my flesh, God, you're a liar. And thereby killing myself, rejecting God's grace, love, right? See, see, Jesus fulfilled all the law of Moses without sin. And what was his reward? God crushing him. Because all the world said, that's not holy. In, in other words, it's like this. Jesus Christ being perfect. Perfect. You, you want a husband? You couldn't ask for a better husband. Every woman on earth seeking a husband. And this is the husband I want. Perfection. A perfect husband. And murdered it. Okay, now here's less than perfect. What, what are you going to do to it? Okay, we rejected perfect. Here comes less than perfect, and what are we going to do to it? Right? So that's the thing. Faith and grace. That's how we please God. By having faith in God's grace. Right? It's not about being perfect. It's about loving imperfect people with a perfect heart. It's called agape love. Agape. Hearing some of my sisters is worried, stressed, full of anxiety over, you know, if I die in my sin, am I going to hell? Boy, that would like make my heart sink. And it's like, man, I've been friends for so long. And you don't listen to anything I say. Because if you had been listening to me, you wouldn't be in a state of worry. You, you had, would have been cured. You've been cured. And all that's the thing is it's, uh, when something's been deemed bad, it's, it's bad. Jesus Christ come to deem the law is death, unworthy of God's grace. Right? Though those who are not living by the law are, are worthy of, of God's grace. Everybody who murdered Jesus was not living by the law. Jesus lived perfectly by the law. They weren't. Yet they received his grace. Chapter 54 of the book of Isaiah says, Shout for joy, O barren one, you who have borne no children. Shout for joy. Break forth, break forth into a joyful shout and crying aloud. You have not travailed. For the sons of the desolate one will be more numerous, right? So, so Jesus... The sons of the desolate one, he, he was the desolate one. He was the one who poured himself out, but really received no love, no care, no nothing. The desolate one, his, his children will be more numerous than the sons of, of the married woman. Says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tents. Stretch out your curtains of your dwelling, spare not, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your pegs, for you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your descendants will possess nations, and they will resettle the desolate cities. Fear not, for you will be put, you will not be put to shame. You know, that's the thing with, with Jesus and that, he, he, he stood right there to, to anyone who's willing to come to him. Here I am, with open arms, willing to, to, to love on you, to care for you. And he stood there willing and able and ready to, 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 to give that hug, which, which is so desperately needed. But, but they rejected it. No, I'm not going inside there. 
Now, you know, I'm not going to go inside of here. He never rejected them. He never said, hey, I, I come to destroy you all. Here, here's the wrath of God come to rain out on you. He's like this. Here, come and receive God's glory. Receive God's gift. Come. It's free. It's thirsty. It's hungry. Come. Here I am. Come and you will receive that which you need. And it wouldn't come. Wouldn't come. Same today. Oh, it's tough when, when you go to church to receive God's glory, to receive God's promise, to, to, to receive a healing, to be cured. But when I get there, all I get is toll. Through guilt and shame about how evil I am, how wretched I am. And the only way I can remember, remedy my problem is by, by paying my tithe. And once my tithe has been paid, you can be ignored like the rest of them. And that's the thing. Have you ever noticed that the elders of the church pay the most tithes? I love money in myself. The more money you have, the more we will recognize you, acknowledge you. The more we'll let you speak. You have no money? You have no... Uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah, everybody come to church and bring your gifts with you. Oh, wonderful. This is my gift. Hi, I'm, I'm David. And I give you myself. <clears throat> well, do you got like 10 bucks, man? 20 bucks? Do you got any money at all? No. But here I am. This is what the Holy Spirit comes in. And this is how the Holy Spirit does it. But here I am. Here I am. Right? It goes on to say, Fear not, for you will not be put to shame, neither feel humiliated, for you will not be disgraced. Have right? you ever been humiliated and felt humiliated and, and all those things? Don't feel it. Jesus walking up to Calvary, being spit on, yelled on by everybody and they rip all his clothes off so, so he's naked and the greatest amount of humiliation they could pour on him. Don't be humiliated. In fact, Jesus says, hey, woman, why, why are you crying? Rejoice with me. Not humiliated, I'm not embarrassed, and I'm certainly not ashamed of you guys. I've come to deliver you. He says, But you will forget the shame of your youth. I know, I was alcoholic, drunk, and Sometimes I was pretty abusive. But you will forget the shame of your youth. It, it will be taken away from you. It, it won't define you. It's not who you are. And the reproach of your widowhood, you will remember no more. The reproach of it, the pain of it, and remember it no more. For your husband is your maker. Your husband is your maker, whose name is the Lord of Hosts, right? A uh, uh, host, Lord of Hosts. You know, you got the oyster. That's a host, and inside of the oyster is the parasite. We are the temple of God, and we are a host inside God's temple. He's the Lord of hosts. Right? His name is the Lord of hosts. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. That's the thing. Jesus Christ is the Holy One of Israel. Jesus Christ 
He is our Redeemer. Jesus Christ comes to you like a man seeking a wife. Jesus Christ comes to you like a husband wooing his wife. Come. Come. Love on me. Hey, hey, you want to you wanna be loved unconditionally? Come. Let me love on you. Who has called the God of all the earth? For the Lord has called like a wife, forsaken and grieved in spirit, even like a wife of one's youth when she is rejected, says your God. Right? Jesus, the, the Christ and the Spirit of God comes to you crying and wailing as though a woman's giving birth. And not just giving birth, but, but has been rejected by all. She, she's an outcast. And the pain and the suffering that, that comes from that. Because they know this is the thing is everyone who rejects us it is rejecting Jesus. Now, now what if I want to reject myself? I want to reject myself. Yeah, rejecting Jesus. See, it's everybody who believes in God's one and only Son. If we're God's son, why, why would God want to destroy us? Yeah, God be angry for a while. He hold back his face so we can't see him, but in that he never takes away his love. Never takes away his mercy. Says, like a wife of one's youth when she is rejected, says your God, for a brief moment I forsook you. With great compassion I will gather you. Right? Now that thing is Jesus. I come like a like a mother bird to gather her hens, her, her babies. Right? That's Jesus here, here is how God comes. He comes with the arms wide open. Come and let me hug on you. Let me care for you. With great compassion, I will gather you. In an outburst of anger, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, loving kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord to Redeemer. Yeah, this world sucks, and life sucks, and the wages of sin are death, and we are fully getting the wages paid. But, but like, like Jesus says, I'm going to leave, and I won't return. I won't return. So Jesus says, in fact, the entire earth and everything on it is going to beg me to return, because this is what the earth and everything's on it is going to find out. Yeah, when they rejected perfect, an imperfect came walking in. Oh, how, how they rejected that one, too. Right? Jesus, perfect, says, yeah, you, you watch. You, you just watch and you will see how perfect I really am when you're begging me to come. Because nothing can compare. He says, I will not recome. I will not come. In fact, those who see me, they know me and they know them because I've deemed them worthy. That they're worthy to see me. They're worthy to be a part of my life. They're worthy to walk with me. And that's why that's the reward we get because we're worthy of it. He'll baptize us in the Holy Spirit and with fire. And this is what they will see. Right? When we're deemed son of God, aren't we deemed equal to Christ? This is what they will see.
poor like in the days of Noah to me when I swore that the waters of Noah should not flood the earth again. God said, I will never destroy the earth again and everything on it. Not by water. So I was sworn that I will not be angry with you. You mean like, like if I dried, died while, while I was drunk? Yeah. I won't be angry with you. Says God. Drunk? What? What? Why would you ever call yourself drunkard? Or why would you ever pick on yourself like that? When God doesn't see it that way. He says, I, I will not be angry with you. Some people are so afraid of God that they literally live in a state of anxiety, fear, stress. They don't believe this. They don't believe that. They think that, that when Jesus said, in, like in the days of Noah, God's going to destroy everything he said, sees. But when Jesus says, oh, it'll be just like in the days of Noah, this is what he's quoting. This is what he's saying. I will not be angry with you. Okay, he's hanging on the cross, but bearing the, the, the sins of the world. And he, he says, holy God, blow him down with fire. No, he says, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. He says, no matter what you do to me, I will not be angry with you. Right? Nor will I rebuke you. For the mountains may be removed. And the hills may shake, but my loving kindness will not be removed from you. Even if the world and everything on it is burned away in fire. And, and, and God rolls up the, the universe like a scroll and it's just gone. His love will not be removed from you. Even though sin and everything that causes sin, death and everything that causes death will be swiped away in one fatal swoop. His love will not be removed from you. Right? If I loved my son with all my heart, would God destroy your son? No, my love will not be removed from you. Will not be removed from you. And everything you love, I love. Because everything good is a gift from a good God. Put there for you to love, to experience love, to feel love. Did you know God is love? Love. God, God is not a, he's love. He goes on to say, and my covenant of peace will not be shaken. Everybody who believes Jesus is the Christ is begotten of son, begotten of God. They are sons of God and, and his peace will not be removed. A lot of people at church they love to pray for you, to be your voice in prayer. But God says, my peace will never be removed. Don't you just thank God every day that, 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 that I know he's with me. Can you, don't you just want to thank God every day that I know wherever I go, whether it be through the valleys or the shadows of death, God is with me. Don't you, aren't you just thank God that, that, that you know He will never leave you. Never leave you. 
And so why don't you just thank God that, that you know that not, you can have a personal conversation with Him directly at any time. Did you know? I don't need your voice. I have the faith of Jesus Christ living in me. Did you, you God, thank God, aren't you glad to know? What, you know, I don't know all things. And I don't know tomorrow and I don't know the future. And boy, I don't, I don't know what's going on in the world today. But this is what I do know. God loves me. Has forgiven me. This is what I do know. God will never leave me. This is what I do know. If I want to see Jesus Christ, all I got to do is gather with two or more people. And, and there he is. There he is. Nice. No, no, no. Jesus Christ is going to come floating down on the clouds with a million angels. And now every eye will see. Yeah, everybody who pierced him saw him. And, and they saw him in the same way you see me. Unworthy. Crazy. And uh, who could believe in your word? He says, says the Lord who has compassion on you. O oh, afflicted one, storm tossed and not comforted. Oh, am I talking to you? <laughs> are you afflicted? Are you storm tossed? Are you worried? Are you full of anxiety? Jesus says, oh, afflicted one, storm tossed, not comforted. 